Hi, today we're going to talk about how to run SQL Server in Docker containers. This is going to be the first in a series of videos that will show you how to do that in AWS. To start with, we'll see how we can run SQL Server in a container running inside Windows 10. And that's what's actually on my laptop. I have a laptop here and I have Windows 10 installed on it. You can do this using Windows PowerShell, PowerShell Core, or even Windows Command Prompt. Your user must have access to Docker. If I check Docker images, you can see SQL Server is not installed. The image is not available on my laptop yet. So where to get that? It's available in the Docker Hub. Microsoft publishes the latest images on Docker Hub. You can pull it from there. Then you can of course upload it in your private registry and thereafter have it pulled from there. If you go to this Microsoft documentation page, you can see the commands over there. There's a command for PowerShell. I'll copy that and paste it here. I want to also change my password. Let's say p at sswrd1234. Bear in mind, this has to be a strong password. If you use a weak password, it would throw an error at startup and SQL Server container will not start up. So it definitely has to be a strong password. Furthermore, in production, it's not good practice to directly enter password through command line because it's very easy for anyone to retrieve that password from your shell history. There are better ways to do that in production, but here it's no big deal. I'm just going to demonstrate how to do that in your dev laptop if you're using Windows 10. And the other point is to understand, as you can see, the image is a Linux image. It's not a Windows container. It's actually a Linux container. And you can run Linux containers on Windows 10. So it's going to be the same image that you would run in production. There's also another parameter that determines the SQL Server edition. If you go to this other page, you can see there's this MS SQL PID parameter available and it's set to enterprise here, indicating enterprise edition. But if you don't pass that parameter, if you exclude that, by default, it is set to developer edition. And that's the free edition. You don't need a license to run developer edition. That's what I'm going to use here. So if I run this, it can find the image locally. Of course, because I didn't have it, now it's pulling the image from Docker Hub. As you know, Docker images are stored in different layers because each layer is immutable. So if you make any changes in a container that's running in your host instead of changing the existing layer, it creates another layer on top of the previous ones, and that's how it maintains immutability of those images. Once you upload that image, all the layers will be uploaded, and that's also another way to reuse the existing images. So if, for example, here the SQL Server image is installed on top of the Linux image, then Linux image is reused. And if you have other applications that are built on top of the same Linux image, they will reuse the same layer. You don't store the same binary several times, separate for each container. And that's also another benefit of running containers instead of VMs. Because as you know, for VMs, everything is repeated. If you have two VMs, they will have completely separate file systems, completely separate operating systems installed on each of those. It's taking a while to download the image as you can see. But this is only the first time. Subsequent runs will use the already stored, already downloaded image that is cached on the local host. 
Now, of course, there's another way too, because this is downloading the image from Docker Hub, that is, through the internet. You can download this image once and store it in your private registry, which is closer and inside your internal network. And again, even for the first time that the container is being spun up on a host, since it will fetch it from a private registry from your local network, it'll be much faster to run it. Okay, so now it's running. Let's have a look. Docker images. Microsoft SQL Server 2017 latest. Docker PS. Docker PS. Here, container is running. It's been up for 19 seconds. From the parameters, I set the port number to 1433. That's the default port number for SQL Server database. First one is the container port. Second one is the host port. So it's binding the container port 1433 to host port 1433. I can access the container and the SQL Server instance that's running inside this container through port 1433 of my host. I don't have SQL Server installed on my local computer, but I have SQL Server Management Studio installed. So now if I connect to localhost, even though SQL Server is not installed, since it's bound to the same port of the container, I'll be able to connect to SQL Server. I don't have any databases, but of course system databases are already there, and I can also create user databases. Creating a user database let's call it a test docker. Let's create a table. There's our table. And now we can insert some rows inside it. Let's run a select query. There it is. Now we can stop this container and see what'll happen. Docker stop. Docker PS, Docker. No containers are running. 
but if I do docker ps-a, the same container is still there, but it stopped. It's exited. Now, if I disconnect my local SQL server, I'm trying to connect again. Of course, I will not be able to connect because my container is stopped. Now I go back here. I'll do docker start. Yeah, connect it again. My database is there. My table is also there. Let's see if the data is also in its place. Yeah, all the rows are still there. No difference at all. Now, what happened here? All the changes that I made are created inside the same container, inside this container ID. And that's a layer on top of the previous image that was downloaded from Docker Hub. Docker images. I have this image, that's the base image. On top of this, a new layer has been created, which includes the file system of my container. When I created my database, all database files were created inside this layer. I can also create another image from this, but that's not necessary. As long as this container layer is available on my host, my files are also persisted. In production, you would use some other method to persist your database files. It's also explained in this Microsoft documentation page. So if we go to persist your data, as you can see, there are two ways you can do that. Either using a local host directory, as explained here in this command, with dash v, and mapping a host directory to veropt ms sql that's the path inside the container where SQL Server DB files are stored. And the second one is using volume containers. That means you first define your volumes and then you can map your volumes to the same path inside your container. And that's how easy it is to run SQL Server containers. In the next video, I'll show you how to do that in production and particularly in AWS using Kubernetes. How you can run a managed Kubernetes cluster in AWS and how to run SQL Server on top of that cluster. Thanks for watching.